The Japan-Korea undersea tunnel has been discussed for more than three decades. This $170 billion project has the potential to change how we think about technology, trade, and travel. A tunnel, not just any tunnel, but an undersea passage linking Japan and South Korea. Two nations divided by ocean, but soon to be joined by a stunning engineering marvel. But will political and technical hurdles prevent this grand goal from becoming a reality? What if this tunnel proves to be the world's most costly and technically challenging project? Let's talk about it. The Japan-Korea undersea tunnel had been in the talks for about three centuries now. The need for a tunnel connecting the two nations was motivated by a desire for strong economic relations, better trading routes, and more collaboration between the two countries. The proposed Japan-South Korea tunnel will transform travel between the two countries, cutting the travel time from 2 hours and 15 minutes by ferry to 50 minutes by high-speed undersea train. The tunnel would be around 200 kilometers long, with 100 kilometers submerged under the sea. It would be the world's longest underwater tunnel if it ever becomes a reality. The tunnel would begin in Karatsu, a seaside city in Kyushu, Japan, near the Korean peninsula. The Iki and Tsushima Islands, which are situated between Japan and Korea, would be crossed by the tunnel. These islands act as natural stepping stones for the construction, reducing the complexity of the route and providing potential access points for construction. It would then ultimately reach Busan, South Korea's bustling port city. Known for its economic importance, the most popular design involves a three-part connection. From Karatsu to Iki Island, this section would consist of either a tunnel or a combination of tunnel and bridge, depending on the seabed conditions and the most feasible construction methods. The proposed three-part design for the Japan-South Korea tunnel aims to create a continuous, efficient link between the two countries, covering a total of 200 kilometers, including 100 kilometers underwater. The first section from Karatsu in Japan to Iki Island. This portion might be a combination of both tunnel and bridge, depending on the seabed conditions, as the geography could require flexibility in construction methods. The second part, from Iki Island to Tsushima Island, would be a full 60-kilometer tunnel that cuts directly through the sea. The final section would involve a 68-kilometer tunnel from Tsushima to Busan, South Korea's major port city. The current push for this undersea tunnel began in the 1990s, as commercial and political ties between Japan and South Korea strengthened, particularly as both countries faced China's growing power in the region. The tunnel's proponents believe it will revolutionize trade and tourism. The planned tunnel might be used as a rapid, efficient transportation corridor for both passengers and freight, significantly lowering travel time and expenses. If we talk about another similar project that is up and running, it would be the Channel Tunnel linking the UK to France. This tunnel was completed in 1994 and spanned around 50 kilometers. The channel was a great engineering marvel of its time and is still one of the most unique projects of the world. It completely changed travel between the two countries and engineers all around the world are taking inspiration from its innovative design. The Japan-South Korea Tunnel is comparable to the Channel Tunnel in terms of dimensions and international significance. Like the Channel Tunnel, it might foster cross-border unity and boost diplomatic ties, trade, and tourism between South Korea and Japan. The Channel Tunnel took nearly six years to complete and cost $21 billion, overcoming geological, financial, and political challenges. On the other hand, the Japan-South Korea Tunnel is estimated to cost an eye-watering $170 billion, which makes it a far more ambitious and risky project that requires commitment. However, the channel's success shows that such projects are actually feasible and have a lasting impact on the economy. But is it going to be that easy? Before we move on, I'd like to ask you a small favor. If you like this content, please take a second to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Over 98% of you watch the videos without subscribing. Imagine what we could accomplish if everyone subscribed. It costs you nothing, but it makes a huge difference to us. So, is it done?
Great, thank you so much. Despite its potential, constructing the Japan-South Korea undersea tunnel presents significant technological and engineering obstacles due to the region's challenging natural environment and complex logistical demands. The area where the construction is supposed to begin is located at the Pacific Ring, an area known for having intense earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Naturally, this presents a significant risk to the tunnel's construction and its safety in the future. To absorb and distribute seismic energy, engineers must incorporate seismic-resistant designs that use modern materials and processes. Flexible joints and shock-absorbing linings, like those utilized in Japan's Seiken Tunnel and new buildings, could help reduce earthquake damage. The seabed's composition is most likely uneven, with areas of soft sediment and solid rock. This unpredictability complicates tunneling and can require repeated adjustments to drilling methods. Tunnel boring machines, TBMs, would need to be adapted for unpredictable geological conditions, with real-time monitoring systems to assess soil stability and adjust the boring process dynamically. To stop flooding during and after construction, strong waterproofing systems and emergency drainage systems would be necessary. Achieving aerodynamic stability within the tunnel is crucial to counteract pressure waves, which can create a tunnel boom when trains travel at high speeds in confined spaces. This requires precise design of the tunnel cross-section and airflow management systems. The tunnel would be operating high-speed trains, those similar to South Korea's KTX and Japan's Shinkansen, in order to operate them safely and eliminate the risk of derailment, track alignment must be sturdy. The project would require an unusually large amount of materials, including high-strength steel, reinforced concrete, and advanced composites designed to withstand underwater pressures and seismic activity. These materials would need to be transported to and installed at undersea construction sites, requiring a complex logistical framework involving barges, cranes, and specialized vehicles. This process adds significant cost and complexity particularly for long sections of underwater construction. Engineers would employ advanced methods like the new Austrian tunneling method, NATM, to monitor rock stability during construction. NATM is particularly useful in unpredictable geological conditions, allowing engineers to adapt reinforcement strategies in real time. Shotcrete, a spray-applied concrete, would play a crucial role in stabilizing tunnel walls as excavation progresses. For sections where a trench-based approach is more feasible, the immersed tube method could be used. This involves sinking prefabricated tube segments into seabed trenches, connecting them underwater, and sealing the joints. Ensuring passenger and structural safety is paramount. The tunnel would require advanced safety systems, including escape routes for emergencies, fireproof compartments to contain incidents, and flood barriers to prevent water ingress. Real-time monitoring systems for detecting structural weaknesses or leaks would also be integrated. Additionally, provisions for ventilation and air quality. Maintenance would be crucial to accommodate long train journeys undersea, ensuring both passenger comfort and safety. The idea of a Japan-South Korea undersea tunnel gained renewed attention in recent years, but faced significant setbacks due to its historical ties to the Unification Church a controversial organization founded by Moon Sun Myung. Moon, known for his ambitious global initiatives, envisioned the 235-kilometer tunnel as a symbol of peace and unity between the two nations. However, in Japan, the project's affiliation with the church has raised many eyebrows, giving rise to controversy. The 2022 assassination of former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe even intensified the situation. Abe's assailant, who identifies himself as Tetsuya Yamagami, states that his actions were motivated by his hatred towards the Unification Church, which was apparently the reason why his family went through a financial crisis. Yamagami's mother had made significant financial contributions to the church, which caused them to become bankrupt and had a significant influence on his life. This incident forced the authorities to check the church's fundraising tactics, and it revealed a shocking truth. The church had been involved in the exploitative practices when it came to fundraising, revealing their coercive donation schemes.
A more thorough examination into the Unification Church's operations in Japan resulted from the repercussions from Abe's murder. As a result, the tunnel project is now viewed with skepticism, both for its logistical challenges and for its tainted origins, effectively stalling its progress indefinitely. As we wrap up, the proposed Japan-South Korea undersea tunnel is nothing short of a marvel, a bold vision of connecting nations, cultures, and economies through cutting-edge engineering. However, its staggering costs, technological hurdles, and controversial history raise important questions about its feasibility and necessity. Will it ever become a reality or remain a symbol of what could have been? Only time will tell.